Hi everyone, my name is Carolina. Today I'm going to show you how to make localizations using Tater. So Tater is a collaborative video annotation tool developed by C-Vision AI. And Tater can be used for several things. Its main functions are video streaming, uh, media annotation and analysis, and algorithm inference. So today we're going to be using annotations that were already made in um, video from Noah's capstone project on Tater in order to make localizations to help train the algorithm for Tater. So the first thing you want to do is open up Google Chrome and then go to www.taterapp.com. And then if you're not already logged in, you'll want to put in your username and password that will be given to you when you have an account made for Tater. And then under the projects heading, you're in our, for our lab, we're going to be going under the NOAA Capstone project, but there might be another project name that you have access to that you could go to as well. So once you're within the project, you will see the library with all the different video, seg video groups. Um, in our case, we have all the different dives from the Musician Seamount Expedition. You'll see um, Book, any bookmarks that you might have made. And then you'll also see all these different video tiles. And these will be a little bit of a preview as to what that five minute video segment um, includes. So here you can see a little bit of the ROV moving when you scroll over that tile. So our video segments are for this project are going to be named using the T number in this long name. So they'll be assigned using like T 181000 instead of ex1706 underscore vid. We're just going to use a T number in order to assign videos. So for my example here, I'm going to go to dive seven and I'm going to go to the very last um, video here. And sometimes it takes a while for the video to load. Um, on slower Wi-Fi. So the first thing that you want to do once you're within the video is make sure that the video, the view is set to your own account. So sometimes when you um, first log on to Tater, it will just show you viewing the baseline version and you can't make localizations on that version. So you want to make sure that viewing shows up next to your name when you're making localizations. So after that, what I encourage doing is watching the video all the way through before you start to make localizations. So what you can do is adjust the volume and then play the video and you'll be able to hear the dialogue that the scientists had when, um, on the, during the expedition. But for our case, we're just gonna scroll through the video to get an idea as to the different animals that we're gonna be looking at here. And then what you want to do is figure out what you're going to localize. So you're going to look at the annotations that were already made in the video. And you can do that by going over to the box entity button. And it will give you this whole list of all the different animals that are in that annotations are made for in that video. So say you wanted to look at the Caliphacus sponge. It, this annotation will give you information such as the species scientific name, so the best classification that the scientists could give that animal based on the video footage, uh, the taxon rank, and it might show you that there are multiple individuals in that frame. It could give you something like the common name for that uh, animal. And you could also have a substrate that, like on this case, we know the sponge is gonna be on the bedrock. So then to get to, you're going to want to get to that frame because there, we don't see that sponge here on this frame. So you're going to click on this button right here and that will bring you to the frame that the annotation was made on. So then if you don't know what this, you might not know what the sponge is here. So then you could go to a different animal ID guide. Um, there are several provided in the lab manual. Um, and you could look up what the sponge looks like, or you could also copy the name and just do a quick Google search at, to see what the sponge looks like. Um, and I advise using only 
NOAA or other professional images so you know what you're looking for. So here we're looking for a stocked sponge. So then I can see the sponge right here. And what you will want to do is use the redraw button to make a box. So this will give you a little plus shaped um, cursor. So then what you can do is click on one side of the animal and drag the box diagonally across in order to make the localization. And then you can move, you can adjust the parameters of this um, box in order to fit the whole animal, but to not cut any part off and to not have too much space around the sides. So I'm just going to check here. Yeah, that's the best view of that animal. Um, and if you move frames like I just did and want to get back to the frame that the localization is on, you can always just click this button again and it'll bring you right back. So then, in our case, this animal is kind of far away. So we could use a magnification button in order to magnify that side of the screen to help us adjust the parameters as needed to better fit this sponge. And then lastly, what you're gonna do is indicate your box confidence. So in my case, I've seen several of these sponges, so I'm gonna mark it as confident that I'm sure that this is the right animal. But you can mark it as unsure if you weren't quite sure if it was the right animal or that you couldn't find it within the frame and then someone else can review it for you. But in our case here, we have multiple individuals, so we're gonna to need to make a second localization. So our second sponge is right back here, but you can only use the redraw button to make a single localization. So we're gonna to need to use this box button here in order to make another box around that second individual. And then what you're gonna to need to do is enter in the scientific name, the taxon rank, and the box confidence again, and then scroll down to the bottom and hit save to save that localization. Um, another thing that you could do, if say, um, say there was a better image of the sponge on a different frame, what you could do is you could move the annotation, copy and paste, cut and paste the localization to a different frame. So for that, you would click on the localization to make it appear white and use your control X command on your computer to move the um, to cut the localization and annotation and then you can move the scrub bar to whatever part of the video had a better view of the image the view of the animal and then use your control V function to paste the annotation and localization there. Um, a couple of other things that you can do here on Tater, you can use these forward and backward buttons to move to the next video, um, the next or previous video file in that dive. You can use the link button to obtain a link to whatever part of the frame you are on. So if you had a question as to, say what this coral here was, you could take the link of that video and put it in the email or give it to someone else and they could look go exactly go right to this frame and help you to identify what that is um, for your own personal use it, you could also use the bookmark function so you could give a bookmark a name such as weird coral and then if you were going to look at it again later back on the home page you would have this bookmark that says weird coral and it would bring you right back to that frame where you made the bookmark so you could look at it again later you could also use this if you were about halfway through a annotating a video and then you went to go get lunch you could put in the date or time or whatever you wanted to use to identify it and it would bring you back to that same part of the video you can also take screenshots on Tater, so you can take a picture of either the whole video with or without the boxes that you make, and those will just go to your downloads on your computer. Um, if you wanted to quickly either go watch the video really slowly or quickly, you could increase or decrease the playback rate, and you can also increase or decrease the quality of the video, so it will, it will always default to 720. 
but if you have slower Wi-Fi, you could watch it at a lesser quality in order to help that out. Um, and I think that's about it for just my, oh, and you can also use the fast forward or the reverse to move through the video. And if you wanted to go frame by frame, so if you're looking for like the perfect frame to move a localization for, you could use these forward and backward buttons and they'll just individually go through each frame. So that's not what you'd want to do if you wanted to go from like minute um, from this point to the end of the video. But if you're just trying to move within a few seconds, you could use that to move through the video. I think that's about it for my basic how to use Tater video. I hope this was helpful and good luck making localizations.